Good morning, everyone, from the campsite inside the Tesla. Um, I slept fairly well, to be honest. I was expecting worse. Um, I did wake up a couple of times because of my kind of uncomfortable sleeping situation. Um, that little crack, you know, the one that I was trying to fill with the blanket. Yeah, that that is not that didn't work out perfectly. Um, to be honest, but um, as you might be able to see I kind of figured out the most comfortable sleeping situation at some point um I mean yeah it worked it worked the AC or the heat in this case worked fine too so um it was comfy in here I wasn't freezing I didn't um suffocate to death uh everything is fine so the beautiful view that I was expecting to have um well Let's say it's still raining and I was expecting better or I was at least expecting to have some sunshine and then the view would have been even better. But I'll turn the camera around in a minute and you judge for yourself. But before we do that, I mean, this is really cool. Look, I mean, these are the panorama roofs of uh, the, the class roof of the Teslas. Uh, and and this is really cool. I mean, if there would have been any stars tonight, um that is oh there, there's a dog outside there. um oh. all right never mind um yeah so this is really cool but now let's let's switch it over to this view look at that i'm right by the river rhine it is really cool i mean this is probably one of the coolest campsites i'm like couple of feet from the water so definitely worth camping here and um as far as the battery is concerned now here comes the fun part uh i went to bed around 10 well i didn't really go to sleep at 10 but um i set the ac and the heat and everything at 10 um so i had 56 percent when i went to bed and now we're at 41 that's 15% and it's 9.15 a.m. now. Uh, so it's 11 hours of heat. Um, I set it to around 75 Fahrenheit. Uh, actually, I don't know the exact number right now, but it's 20 degrees Celsius. Um, I had it tuned down a little during the night just because I like sleeping a little colder. I kind of turned it up. Um, I was too lazy to to um kind of crawl to the front to to set it up so i just used the tesla app uh, i just had the phone you know i have the phone plugged in they have usb outlets there had the phone lying next to me i was like Ooh, this is kind of chilly um started turning it up during the night so that works really well so um kind of confirmed what i was hoping for i'm not losing too much and if i would have a tesla let's say 90d or something um i wouldn't even have lost 15 percent or if I would just be, you know, as normal people and wouldn't sleep as long. But on the weekends, you know, I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, I like to sleep in. So, Tesla camping, definitely worth uh, a thing. Let's hope the the Model 3 will actually have a flush back. And um, I don't know what I will do. Because maybe, you know, if, if I'll end up buying one of these. Or if I'll end up taking this out camping during the summer, maybe more. Maybe I'll have a, a little thing manufactured, like a little um, cushion or something to fit right in this crack. Because this is, you know, this is basically the whole issue that we have right there. Okay, you see it? And I shouldn't be using my front cam for this. This is, yeah, all right, there we go. So, so this is where the issue is. Um, I have this yoga mat here, and then I have this whole blanket folded up in between. So um, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll get around to to have something manufactured to fill this gap. But other than that, this night was good. Um, and I'll probably take a shower and head out to the next little special thing that I'm up to. And I will let you know how this goes. I'll actually probably go to a supercharger first, um, top it off, or at least grab some breakfast. So, 
Yeah, and the nicest thing is, I, I mean, the campsite isn't that big, so I could just walk over to the house back there. But I'll probably, since I have to move my car anyway, and since I have to drive out, I might just move the whole car over there so I don't have to walk back and forth the whole time. Um, that's a nice thing, camping in a Tesla. It's still a car, and you can drive around in it. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, guys, I reverted this whole thing to more or less normal. I actually fitted a bunch of stuff in the flap. Um, oh, I didn't show you. Okay, there's a flap in the trunk that lifts up. This is where the, um, the, the feet of the kids go if you have the rear-facing seats. And this is where I stowed the, um, you know, the, the, the little thingy you put over the trunk to not have your things fly out. I, I'll, I'll just have to show you guys. Anyway, um, I actually stowed my yoga mat in there and uh, my blanket and then I put a bunch of stuff like um, one empty suitcase where I transported another blanket in um, and my pillow and all the stuff in the trunk and then I just had you know on the normal trunk bed I, I just have my stuff laying around now I um, didn't bother too much to put it back too nicely but I wanted to have it kind of clean because we're going to a little Tesla event I mean they're hosting an event I just saw that on Facebook uh, a couple of weeks ago um, at a supermarket down a couple hundred, no, no, not like 80 kilometers. So it's 1046 now. I'm planning to be there around noon. So I'll um, punch this into my GPS, see the route. Um, and there's probably, I, I think I checked, there's probably one supercharger more or less on the way. So I'll stop by there, have some breakfast, um, you know, top it off, and then head over to the event. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it was still awesome sleeping here <laughs> and I'll actually sleep another night here now you might say well this guy is crazy I mean one night in the Tesla fine you know there's just a little bump or anything but honestly I actually liked it here um, it's a good spot to you know head back tomorrow there's the mountains um, there's the river I like water a lot so I like it here I'll spend tonight here as well and I'll head back at night so I'll get going and I'll update you guys along the way so it's raining a lot. I was hoping this is not going to happen. Uh, this wasn't going to happen, but it did. Uh, so I went to the supercharger. Um, I charged up. I got some, I guess you really couldn't call it breakfast anymore. It was more like a lunch brunch thing. Um, and now I just ran back <laughs> to the car in the rain. It wasn't really far, uh, but, you know, now I'm back. We charged the battery to uh, about 90% now. Um, you know at the supercharger I was pretty quick so now I'm on my way to the Tesla event it says it's about a one hour drive um, you know it's not too far it's it's probably like 40 miles like 70 kilometers um, but you know it goes through some of the mountain stages so I'll be I'll be driving down there now and I guess I'll update you guys when I get there all right well I'm now here at a supermarket where um, Tesla and the team has set camp for the whole week they've been you know serving customers promoting the um, well electric cars they are making obviously the Tesla's and they actually have a Model X up there and a uh, Model S um, the one with the new front grille this is actually one that has the old front grille um, there has been a makeover of the front um, headlights or well I guess the headlights because those are the tail lights they're always at the front so the headlights and the front um, so I've been checking it out I've been talking to some guys and some customers over there see how how they're thinking about this whole electric car thing um, I think I'm gonna pull up next to them for maybe some minutes I hope they'll, they'll just let me do that um, probably no reason why not maybe talk to some more customers to um, tell them about my experiences um, and hopefully you know film a short clip of the Model X you know the Falcon wing doors um, the rear seat so that you guys can get an idea of what the Model X looks like. It's been fun talking to the people over there. It's kind of cold outside, a little chilly. Um, so I just got myself a hot uh, tea, um, sat back in the car, turned on the heat for a while. But I'll get my car over there and um, have a quick film of the Model X then. And I just I just figured out that the front of the model, uh, of this kind of older one is a little bit bigger on the Model S. Um, obviously it's bigger if you don't have the dual drive because there's no front engine. But even with um, dual drive, same car, Model S, um, the newer one is a tiny bit smaller just because um, there's a new filter. 
a new air filtration system put in place. That's why this one has a slightly bigger trunk. Frunk, sorry. Trunk is in the back. So yeah, I'll, you know, get over and uh, hopefully film some, some more footage. supermarket where the Tesla guys have set up camp. I'm about to head down to the city center of Frankfurt. Um, I just checked on one of my apps. There's a charging station there. I'm gonna go right down to the center to the Zeil, maybe have a coffee there, you know, look around for a little bit. It was fun here. Um, now the rain started. I mean, I'm kind of under a, under a roof here, so you can't really see, but it's it started raining again. It's not really pouring, but it's kind of, you know, not, not the nicest weather to stay out here. Um, but it was fun talking to a couple of people, you know, it's it's interesting to see that some of them still, you know, have such wrong perceptions about um, electromobility just in general, you know, talking range, um, charge times, comfort, technology, and all of those things. So I think it's important to realize that um, this is a technology that's still fairly new, but not new at all, because the first car ever in the world was in fact electric, right? So just back then you didn't have the batteries. Now you have the batteries, now we put it all in one big package and it's still improving a lot, but it doesn't stop us right now from being able to do something, you know, and um, even though, yes, you're using electricity that has to be produced somewhere, um, doing the math on this, especially if you keep in mind that in the future more of this will come out of solar um, and renewable energy sources, this is the way to go forward and if you look at the um, efficiency ratings on electric engines so how much of the power is actually converted into into movement um, take take a gas or diesel engine and, and you'll be you'll be like wow it's it's only that little um, yeah the rest is lost in you know transmission um, heat you know friction all of that so uh, obviously some of it is lost here too but but not nearly as much so um, yeah I'll head down to the city center of Frankfurt, um, just checked out where the charging station is. It won't be a Tesla charging station, and I don't really need it, uh, if, I'm, if I'm honest, but usually you can park there for free, and I, you know, I like showing um, that electric cars are all around us, so um, you know, putting it on display in public at a charging station is actually something that I promote just for people being like, oh look, there's another one of these, maybe, maybe they start thinking about, oh, maybe I'll have to get one too. Um, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys later and um, I'll get going. It's probably like a half hour drive down there. All right, so I did go down in the city of Frankfurt, um, down into the city of Frankfurt. I drove all the way down to the city center just to find out that um, the charging stations in my app, I think they were wrongly classified. I think they were down in a parking garage somewhere because I couldn't see them on the street. But anyway, I, you know, had a good drive down there and actually noticed something funny. I was, sorry, um, when I was up in Königstein, where the Tesla event was taking place, the, um, they have a little gauge down here that you can, you can look at that tells you how much energy you've used. Um, and 
because it was on a mountain, kind of, I was going down the mountain coming into Frankfurt, and it was showing negative usage, so I was generating more, like I was generating power. Um, I think it was really funny, it actually showed a negative 57 or something down here. So, um, pretty pretty cool thing, I think. That's It's just fun stuff. Um, anyway, now I'm, you know, I figured why well, stay in Frankfurt, you know, I went outside, I looked around a little, it was kind of raining, not too nice. I There was a time when I lived in Frankfurt, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't super nice, so... Um, I'm now, I, I put in the next supercharger supercharger on the way because I figured, you know, why not just head down to the next supercharger. Um, I actually know the area quite well. My sister used to go to school here. So I'll go down to a restaurant tonight. Um, they have um, their winery, actually. They make their own wine. Really, really cool area down there in the Rhine Gau in Frankfurt or in the Frankfurt area, I should say, at the Rhine. Um, so yeah, I'll make my way down there later today. Um, right now I'm on the way to the supercharger. I'll probably stay there. There's usually some kind of restaurant there. I hope they have um, Wi-Fi and a charging outlet for my phone, uh, my, my my laptop, because I'm going to edit some of the videos and some of my other um, Tesla vlog videos. But what I wanted to show you right now, I mean, now there is a construction site, but I'm currently on autopilot. Um, so my GPS is talking quite a lot, but you know, so autopilot, I've talked on the German vlog uh, about this already. It uses the camera, the front radar, and the sonar kind of too. Um, and it identifies the lanes, it keeps the distance, you know, it's basically two parts right now. I'm on the adaptive cruise control, the traffic aware cruise control basically. So now it's slowing down because there's traffic ahead. Um, you know, it, it will adapt my speed. I can change the um, distance I want to keep on a little, um, wheel down here that's or not a wheel but a little switch down here um, but if I tap this lever twice it does the sound and now says autopilot now I'm on a construction site I probably shouldn't use it here to be honest that's why I have my hand on the wheel at all times especially if I'm in a situation like this now please don't be stupid and if you have a Tesla please be responsible in using this because in my opinion, it's one of the greatest features, and I hope that they collect a lot of data, so please send them their data, you know, the, um, it's a new option in here, I, at least in Germany, um, you can opt in or out of sending your data. Um, I mean, it, this is for making the system better, right? This is for something that's, that's going to have, uh, hopefully, autonomous driving at some point, so sending the data will improve this over time. Um, but please don't be stupid. So if you're using it and if you have ideal conditions, no rain, clear sight, no direct headlights, uh, no direct sunlight, um, good lane markings, and um, ideally not too much traffic, even if you decide to be like, hey, let's do this thing, do its thing and keep our hands off, be responsible and have your hand ready at all time. Also, have your feet ready to opt in and out for braking or accelerating if you need to. But just, you know, for reference, um, this thing works really well. I mean, now I'm in a construction site with yellow lane markings, a uh, concrete border, you know, now it's following the lane markings. I was reading an article that said, yeah, the downside in Germany is it doesn't follow yellow lane markings. It does, I mean, it does. Sometimes not quite as well uh, as white ones, but still really good. So now I'm back on the, um, German Autobahn, I just set the traffic aware cruise control to my default seven over setting. Um, it identifies all the road signs, so you know, I, I don't have my hand on right now. It keeps the distance nice and smoothly. It will accelerate and brake. It actually now in Germany tracks the left car or the car to the left of me in the lane to not overtake on the right. That's illegal in Germany. Um, but as you can see, this is really, really cool. I mean, this is awesome driving because I don't have to do anything but to have my hands and feet ready and monitor the road conditions ahead of me. Now in version 8, which this is running currently, um, the, the firmware version 8 right there, so now it's turning the wheel because we're in a in quite a curve here. I think that's super cool. Now it also tells me to please uh, put my hands on the wheel for a short moment usually keep it on the wheel obviously but um, you just have to tap it for a short moment 
Why does it do that? Well, it actually does that in infrequent, um, um, you know, uh, intervals because it will, now uh, some traffic here, it will monitor the traffic around you. If there's nothing going on, I had periods of time where it didn't ask me to do this for, you know, a lot of minutes on a row, but if the road is getting difficult, so if it's a lot of windings or something in there, and if there's a lot of traffic, it will start being like, hey, please, you know, put your hands on the wheel, um, and yeah, just for, for safety reasons. All right, well, we're in this construction site again now. Um, this little sound is a sound that it makes when when I'm going uh, a little over my settings, you know, I have a couple over settings in here for well, what is it, what is it called for um, for speed? Um, but as soon as we're out here, and that's in 200 meters, as far as I can tell, yep, 200 meters, um, I'll be back on the normal highway, and this thing will be taking over again. You know, I currently I'm currently disengaging it because it's a lot of things going on. But now we're back, put it back into, all right, now I'll accelerate up. This thing has a good acceleration. This wasn't even an inch of throttle movement. So I'll just take it out from this one on. Um, obviously I have my sight on the road because you need to do this still, please. Like it's, it's not completely autonomous yet. The new platform they just announced, it will be, um, and I trust the system a lot and I, you know, it, it does a really good job, especially in, in bad traffic. If it's stop and go traffic, traffic jams, even within the city, you know, um, great jobs. It also tracks the movement of, or like the blinker of a car. So if you set your turn signal, it will track it and it will slow down to let the other guy in front and all of those things, but it's not perfect. So I had instances where it was doing some unexpected movements. Um, and for that reason, just, you know, rest your hand on here and you'll sense it, like it will guide you. I'm not doing anything right now. I could, you know, I, I'm not doing anything with my hand, not any active movement. Um, but in case it does do something weird, you have your hand on here, you can sense it. And as soon as I do this little movement right here, now it's mine again. I, it disengaged the um, steering. I still have the adaptive cruise control on. Um, and this is usually what I do if I get in a situation where I'm not sure what will happen. I'll just keep my hands on, um, usually both of them, and we'll just track, does it do it, does it not do it? And if it does something that I don't want it to do, I'll just you know move the steering wheel an inch and I'll have control. But let's re-engage it. There's another turn coming on here, uh, up here. Um, see this movement? It's spooky, but it's cool. I mean, this is the future right now. Um, and this system is, even even though this is not the completely new platform yet, the, the one that was just announced, obviously, because it was just announced, but even this system using one camera, the radar, the sonar systems, um, it is good, I mean, I I like it. I love it. So I just arrived at the supercharger. It's behind the courtyard Marriott. It was kind of um, a little bit more off of the highway than usually. Usually they're like, like they're right there. I mean, in Germany you have um, the Autobahn and then there are um, kind of stops right at the Autobahn. You just, it's not even a, an own exit. It's just, it's like you get off and you can't really get anywhere else. And uh, Tesla put its own ones usually where you get off at an exit and then there's a, it's called Autohof. It's where, you know, trucks go and it's a bigger stop. Mm -hmm. and, but this one was about one mile off of the exit and behind this Marriott Hotel, I guess they have kind of a deal with Marriott here. Um, but since it's raining and, you know, I don't really like the rain, um, I might not stay here for too long or actually I'll see what's in the area. I go exploring for a while. I'll probably plug it in now, you know, sit in the car and check what's in the area. And um, yeah, either stay here or head over to my, um, to the restaurant I was playing on, uh, I was planning on going anyway. Oh, hello there. Um, I actually found out a perfect way to spend time in this um, while waiting for the supercharger. I mean, I could have left 
some time ago. Um, but honestly, I was watching The Mentalist. I kind of got into that show. Um, I, I know, it's what, whatever. I was watching an episode of The Mentalist. Um, and I just realized, hey, this is this is great. I didn't know that chairs would recline, recline this far. They almost go down all the way, almost touching the, the back seats. Um, so I can, you know, lay down in here really comfortably. So I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, I'll set camp tonight in a little different fashion. I'll uh, do the same thing here, recline the chair all the way, but then, you know, do it on the um, passenger side so that I can go in my camp mode. Um, because in the camp mode, you know, I I put it in neutral. Um, I engage the parking, uh, parking brake manually, set the temperature, turn off the headlights. Um, uh, I mean, the, the thin LED outline will stay on, but it, you know, the, it doesn't really bother. Um, doesn't use up too much energy. And then I dim the display all the way manually, put it in night mode and dim it. So, you know, maybe I'll, it, it would require less effort to be, to be honest, and it might be a little more comfy. However, I'm not really sure. I did this once in the US. I slept in a passenger seat of a, of a car and it wasn't, wasn't great at all. And back there, I, I slept fairly well, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm done now. You know, I, I actually I mounted my phone. Um, I have a little mount for my other car, which I usually carry around and put my phone in when I'm driving for GPS and everything. But this thing handles really well on the glass roof. So I said before uh, to some other guys today when I was talking, you know, maybe the glass roof wouldn't be my first option. I'd rather get the um, air suspension, but being able to put stuff like the camera, the GoPro that I'm filming with right now on the roof, and the um, cell phone if you're laying down on the supercharger, it's actually really convenient. I guess I could put it on the windshield up here too, but the phone is kind of small and uh, it's a perfect angle for me to, to watch a movie. Um, and it's, you know, charging and has the USB outlets right there. So that's really cool. Anyway, the car is at 97%, so we're almost full. You know, the last 10%, they take a long time. It was actually it was charging really fast at first. I came here with about 50%. After six minutes, it was up to 70%. So, you know, those charging cycles. So right now it's 450. I might go down to the Rhine River now or drive down to the Rhine River, maybe stop at a, um, stop at a bakery, get some food for later tonight because I'll probably just head to the restaurant right now and then I will um, go back to the campsite and I have an adapter cable for the camp um, outlets which you know I tried yesterday to charge the car and it wasn't probably secured enough with enough voltage uh, or wattage wattage <laughs> watts I guess um, but I'll I can use that to charge my laptop I'll probably just thread it I'll park night right next to the box thread it to the car edit all my videos the campsite has free Wi-Fi so um, I'll probably do that, enjoy, um, you know, a beer over at the restaurant and after that head back to the campsite. It'll be a couple hours, well, it'll, it'll be an hour probably to, to get there. Um, so I'll start now. I'll just go back. It stopped raining, so that's good. I'll go back and unplug me, um, go to the supermarket. I think it's right next to it because two other Teslas pulled up in the meantime. There was one... Model X, which is still beside me, and there was a Tesla Model S, and the guy from the Model S came back with some grocery shopping bags, so I think there's a um, supermarket somewhere here. I'll just pick up some, you know, some pretzels or something um, for later tonight, because I'll stay up, you know, if I eat at 5.30, I'll be hungry again at 10 or something. So yes, this was really good to figure out, because I might do this again soon, and um, yeah, fun stuff. So, also, my good friend Johnny, uh, if you're watching this, Johnny, um, this one is for you. So, on an earlier video on my German vlog, uh, on the same vlog, but, you know, one of the German episodes, I was talking about a website that does EV charging trips, or that you can calculate your, your trips with. Does a great job. Um, he was the one who pointed it out to me. Sorry, forgot to mention. Um, and also, he just told me that the ferry um, is free for electric cars over uh, to the Nordic, so Denmark, Sweden, and, um, and the other one. So that will be that will be great because uh, we might we might go up there on a trip. Uh, obviously, film that thing.
But um, that that is a cool info. So I didn't know that. If any one of you are watching right now who are in Europe and you know we're planning on supercharging our way up there, apparently it's free even if you're not supercharging, just have an electric car. Um, that's really cool, I think. All right. Well, I had a beautiful dinner up on the mountain um, at a you know restaurant I, I've known for some time. I'm right now driving alongside the River Rhine. I chose this route to get back to my campsite, put on some weekend music. So, um, I mean, everything is great. This has a Spotify um, subscription coming with it. So that's really cool. And uh, autopilot is keeping me in place here. Now it's going to start driving again for me as these cars start moving but i better get my hands back on the wheel so um, i'll talk to you guys later okay so as you might be able to tell from my setup here with my laptop i made it back to camp safely um autopilot helped me quite a lot you know some of the roads were kind of narrowed down and i just put it on rested both of my hands on the steering wheel and it was really nice it was actually a beautiful drive i gotta say even though the weather isn't perfect it wasn't really raining um, and it was it was just dark enough or let's say still light enough to see kind of the outlines of the other side of the river where all these beautiful castles are so um, if any of you are ever able to make it down here driving on the Rhine side down here is um, is amazing so um, and but because it was kind of dark already I couldn't really mount the camera and get any good shots so um, I guess that will have to do um, yeah I'm I'm back here, I'll edit some videos, I'm not quite sure yet how I'll do my tonight's setup, probably sleeping in the passenger seat, um, just to, you know, give it a shot, uh, laying down my extra blanket kind of down there in the food, re uh, in the food room. Um, right now I have, I, I parked my car really close to the outlet to thread the cable of my laptop through here um, to, you know, edit some videos, so that's what I'll be doing for the next hour or so. Um, maybe uploading one more of my German ones, um, my vlog videos. So yeah, that will be it for now. I will probably update before I go to bed. All right. Good evening, everybody. It is shortly after midnight now, and um, I was editing some some stuff, browsing on the internet. It was actually really nice. I was just chilling in the car, you know, have the heat on. Um, I tried plugging it in over there too. It didn't work same problem as yesterday so I guess the outlets are just not made for it um, I came here with 71% left on my battery we're now at 65 you know I've been listening to music actually watching some movies on my phone and having the Bluetooth connected to the car um, radio so the audio was playing over um, the speakers which was nice um, as you can probably barely tell since it's pitch black um, and the one spot where my face is is kind of black as far as I can tell from the camera. Um, I did decide to try out the um, front seat version of sleeping in this car. Uh, did recline it all the way back. It looks fairly nice. I mean, um, I'm feeling really comfortable. I put one of my blankets down in the foot, um, down here where my feet are, um, and kind of on the seat to, to level it all out and to have it nice and comfy. Um, and now I'll, I'll see how sleeping is up here. Uh, once again, I did go into full camper mode. So I sat down, put the car in neutral, um, applied the parking brake manually, turned off the headlights manually. Um, as I said before, I think uh, the LEDs will stay on, so that's fine. But I pointed them over the river, so I'm not, you know, annoying anyone at night. Um, then I switched the... Um, the uh, you know I set the car to the right temperature and to my settings that I prefer you know keeping the lowest fan speed um, yeah I mean that's basically it from camper mode uh, dimmed the screen screen to the lowest level um, turned off the automatic screen brightness setting and switched it to um, night mode so that's all I'm I am like the parking brake better hold what it's supposed to do I mean I'm trusting this car it worked last night but I'm kind of on a little like um, decline here so if this were happened to to disengage I would be kind of um, well wet from the water because I would be rolling into the River Rhine but uh, I trust Tesla with their parking brakes 
and the whole technology. So the reason I'm obviously on the passenger side is because on the driver's side there are the pedals and um, I don't want to touch them while I'm sleeping. So I'll talk to you guys in the morning and I'll update you on how sleeping on this side works out.